when should you fly a broken battery? Recently, I've seen some posts and we're gonna talk a little bit about if you're getting into FPV, it is inevitable that you're going to crash and your battery is going to, where did I put it? I've got one of these packs right here, a little 4S pack. You do not want to be breaking these things all the time because they're expensive. So we're gonna find out when is it the right time to think about saving your battery or when should you definitely dispose of it and dispose of it safely versus what some other people are going to recommend, including myself. And the big warning for this video, I'm going to say, this is where I offer advice, but I don't always follow it. So do as I say, not as I do. Now, generally, when you crash a battery, the number one thing that you need to look at to make it unusable is if any of the cells are punctured. If you go over and you pick up your LiPo, and I don't know about the chemicals uh, and what they actually do to you, but if you can smell a sweet sort of smell, that is um, a punctured lipo, that is really bad. It's probably really toxic for you as well, but that means that cell is toast. If that has happened, there's a couple of options. The safest one, dispose of your battery. You don't need it. So you can either throw it in a bit of salty water. Um, the unsafe way to dispose of a battery is I take them out to like a big space and just smash them a bunch of times with like an ax and cut it in half. And yeah, it's gonna burst into flames. It's gonna let out a lot of energy, but that is, a quick way to make sure that there is no energy left in here. If you just throw these in the bin, it can be quite dangerous, or you can take them to a lipo dispo disposing place. So yeah, number one, if you can smell or visibly see a punctured lipo, it's toast. I don't recommend doing it. Now you can separate the cells in here if you, are, if you don't wanna spend the extra cash and you are happy to, could say, convert a 6S pack into a 4S pack or a 4S pack if you would like to save the cells and break it down and then turn it into a 3S pack, you can do that. Don't cut the wires all at the same time would be my biggest tip. Um, that is possible though. Some of the soldering is going to be a little bit annoying when it comes to the little plates that they've soldered on inside here. It's not as simple as your normal soldering onto your flight controllers or anything like that, um, but that is an option. Now, here's the tricky part. If you look at your battery, it doesn't smell weird. It is totally mangled up though and looks quite deformed. The worse it looks, probably going to be the better, but sometimes, yeah, I have flown batteries that look terrible. They have taken an absolute beating, but their cell integrity is still really, really good. And how do you check that? Number one, you can put them on your charger and you can actually check like the internal resistance when you're looking at a battery. It will go through, I'll see you later if I can put some pictures on the screen, but you can check the internal resistance of each one of these cells. And if one is drastically different than the others, that's going to be a problem. Batteries like, or the cells in like a 4S or a 6S battery, they like to be relatively the same. If they're really out, don't do it. And the other part is, when it comes to charging or discharging, that's when batteries are gonna burst into flames. So as well as having good safety etiquette, if you put your batteries and you're charging them on your bed, you're being stupid. Don't do that. Like have somewhere safe to charge them because nine times out of 10, when you are charging your battery, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. That is when you're going to uh, have any issues. I have never had in my 10 years of flying a battery issue when I've been charging or discharging or anything like that. And I have smashed plenty of batteries. However, I don't fly unsafe lipos. Like if they are visibly damaged, I'm like, okay, that's done. I will dispose of them. Don't, it is not worth saving $30 uh, if you're going to be burning your house down, your garage down or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, so that's my little advice. Look for it visibly if it's damaged uh, or if you can smell uh, like a sort of sweet fruity smell, that is your lipo, get rid of it or at least get rid of that punctured cell. If it still seems okay, charge it up or check the internal resistance. Uh, I would watch it very, very carefully on those first couple of charges and give it a fly and see how it goes. And you never know maybe you do have an okay lipo because I see plenty of pictures online that are like, is this lipo okay? Um, it just all comes down to the cell and how much damage it's taken and is it punctured? Now, the flip side of that, you might see some lipos where the lipo is fine, but the balance lead's been cut or the balance, uh, the wires have been snipped um, right here. If that's the case, that's totally fine. That is fine to replace as long as you're doing it safely. And by that, I mean cutting each one of these one at a time you should have no issues whatsoever. So yeah, that's uh, my, my little bit of advice right there. 
Let's see, someone's saying, keep all mine inside ammo cans, uh, even when I charge. That's a really good tip there. So that's from Hunt Boom. If you've got some other things that you look out for when you're dealing with lipos as well, please throw them in the chat. Um, I charge mine near the fireplace. I had to throw a few um, into them over the years. Here's a tip as well. If you are going on holiday, so maybe it's holiday season and you've got a bunch of lipos that you're worried about, you don't want to leave them just sitting in your house, the best place for them is in a cook pot, in a cooking pot in the oven. So that way, if it does burst into flames, well, the oven's usually pretty good at uh, handling a lot of heat and things that are on fire. When I've run bats down too hard, I found giving them a really slow charge up the storage voltage seems to help. Yep. Uh, and if you put them down too low, you can actually save batteries. It's not good for the cell health, but if you fly a battery down or maybe it you do a really hard punch out, it gets stuck in a tree, and then all of a sudden, by the time you get your drone back, it's like 2.6 volts per cell. When you go to put that into your charger, it's going to say cell error. It's not going to recognize it because it needs to be at 3.3 volts per cell. You can also stick them on nickel metal hydride, nickel, nickel metal, uh, like a NICAD. I don't know what the actual chemical name is right there. I was just call it a NICAD battery. But yeah, you can charge it like that for like 30 seconds at a time and it will boost the cell voltage until it is safe enough to put it into uh, a proper balance charge with your LiPo charger. So that's another little tip there. But again, don't do that. That's, uh, I'm advising you don't do that. That's just what I have done in the past and I haven't had any issues. You might be um, a little bit different. Uh, get that special lithium fire extinguisher maybe using, uh, I don't know what this is but maybe that's the case. Yeah, and do not put a lipo fire out with water because the oxygen inside the water and the, the lithium, it's, it, it doesn't help it at all. If you actually want to discharge your batteries faster or you want to dispose of them faster and they're punctured um, and you've chopped them up, you can actually drip some water on there and you'll see the reaction. It actually releases more energy. Like it's a better way to, uh, to discharge them or have some catastrophic failure, so to speak. Um, don't just leave them in the oven. Uh, don't just don't leave the oven on when your lipos are inside. Yeah, that is also a, hey, happy, happy RC fly. Yeah, that's also a good tip as well. Don't, don't turn your oven on. Every time you turn it on, you've left something in there. Double check that you've, uh, you've removed it, but it is a good place. It is a good little tip right there. If you are going away on holidays, you need somewhere to store some dangerous goods. Oven is always a good idea. All right. 